timeout, Troutwick along with Alex Wallow. The bell rings, and this is round one. Scheduled to go 15 for the junior heavyweight title that belongs, at least for the moment, to Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Here in Georgia, the, the scoring is done on the 10-point must system. The winner of each round must receive 10 points, the loser nine or less. Scoring is done by three judges with a non-scoring referee who in this case is Vinnie Raynon. The three knockdown rule is in effect and the fight will be ruled a knockout if three knockdowns occur. Also, the standing eight count is in effect as is the mandatory eight count. The crowd very lively and Alex, we haven't heard any of your early strategy. How about it? We just saw Holyfield. He is devastating right now. He is just outspeeding the champion. He's doing everything he has to do. He's got that six-inch reach advantage, and he's got the six-inch height advantage. And the man who just has to find the range where he can reach Cowie, but Cowie cannot reach him. On Dwight's uh, part, he have, cannot change at age 33. He's just going to put on relentless pressure. Unlike most fighters who are coming in all the time out, Cowie is a good defensive fighter. He covers well. He bobs. He weaves. The Vander must use that jab to try to pierce that defensive shell. He's doing that very well right now. Hard left off the forehead of Cowie. So difficult to penetrate his defenses. But right now, grimacing. Holyfield trying to penetrate with the left. Right now, the biggest difference is the reach and the speed. Evander is just quicker than Dwight. Evander, the both fighters are light heavyweights. Evander outgrew that division. I think Dwight ate himself out of that division. I think he's carrying excess poundage, and that has to hurt his reflexes and his speed. And yet he still thinks he can go up to the heavyweight division. If he gets by this fight, that's a very big if. This is the division that the WBC and IBF call the cruiserweight division. Holyfield in the white trunks with blue trim. Dwight Muhammad Cowie more well-known as the Camden buzzsaw in the white trunks with red trim. A good left-right combination to the head of Cowie. But you have, to, you have to watch very closely with Dwight Muhammad Cowie because he does block an awful lot of punches. But right now, Evander is getting through and getting through often. A wild right after a good left-right combination. Lots of noise in the Omni right now. Watch Cowie stalking, constantly moving forward. If he ever takes a step back, you'll know that he's in early trouble. Evander right now is making a little bit of a mistake in the closing seconds of here. He's backing straight up. He should be moving from side to side. Stay with the punching range. There, he moves to his right, away from the Cowie, Cowie right hand. We're watching the WBA Junior Heavyweight Championship bout between Cowie and Holyfield, and it's off to a great start. We'll be back. ABC's Wide World of Sports with the WBA World Junior Heavyweight Championship out between Dwight Muhammad Cowie, the shorter man, trying to score one for shorter people here at only five foot seven, and Evander Holyfield. This bout has been fought at tremendous pace, and another warning to keep the punches up from Vinnie Raynon, the referee. That, I believe, is the third time that he has received words from referee Cowie has. And he didn't stop Cowie. He drilled two more shots right on the word Holyfield on uh, Vander's belt. Now, Alex, we thought we may have seen a cut on Cowie. Uh, still, I have not seen blood, but they did use that frozen piece of metal known as an end swell and did apply Vaseline above his left eye. Well, Dwight has taken punches, uh, taken a lot of shots from Vander, especially right hands on that eye, and there is swelling. Cowie stopping his feet at Holyfield and perhaps a little taunting begins. It is a strategy which he would not reveal to Alex Wallow yesterday in an interview that we had with him here in Atlanta. But what do you think he tries to do with that taunting? Well, we, we talked the opening. He tries to get Evander flustered. He tries to 
take advantage of his inexperience and make him get reckless, uh, let, get under his skin, make him do things he doesn't want to do. Right now, Vander's just backing all over the ring. He just doesn't have the strength right now to resist Dwight or to make him respect him with his punch. He's got to eventually plant his feet and drill some shots and then move side to side, not stand in front of him right here like this. That's it. Move to his right and let the right hand go. Stay away from Dwight's right hand. Past the midway point of round five. Holyfield trying to stay near the middle of the ring where he wants to be, not on the ropes where Cowie just tried to push him. of this bout has slowed tremendously in this the fifth. It could not continue. The question is who's going to get their second win first. You would generally expect the younger fighter to get that but Dwight Muhammad Kawi used to get stronger as the fight progressed. He certainly did when he won the title against Piet Kroos. Kawi's eyes are, are blood red. He has taken numerous shots. A right left right left combo to Holyfield. He's got Holyfield to stagger right now. He's got him hurt. He's doing he's not doing anything right now Vander he is very very tired this is just trench warfare right now Dwight Cowie is winning it he may not be ahead on points but he's winning the, the war Holyfield really looking fuzzy there for a moment but he did come back with a strong left to keep Cowie honest and now a left right for his own there he looked a little bit fresher there Al in the closing seconds of the round he planted himself and let his hands go and momentarily stopped Cowie. Alex, these are all new experiences right now for Holyfield. He's never been in a position like this as round five comes to an end. A decidedly strong round for Cowie. Let's see if we can listen in to the corner of Holyfield. in the fifth round was yet another low blow from Kawi. Let's take a look. It was more like that, a paw. Yeah, that I thought was legitimate. Uh, Kawi ran across the ring. There was some confusion in the Holyfield corner. He didn't have his mouthpiece in. That's an unusual mistake with as much experience as there is in that Holyfield corner for George Benton and Lou Duba not to get the mouthpiece in. This is, is round, unusual indeed. This is round six, scheduled to go 15. Evander Holyfield started this fight very fast, won the first round in convincing and impressive fashion. But the grounds have gotten closer and closer since then. I thought four was very close, even though I gave it to Holyfield, and I gave five to Cowie the first round I gave him. But he has all the momentum his way right now. Alex, don't you think that more punches from Holyfield have gotten in beyond the defenses of Cowie in this fight than the tapes that we watched together? And, and here's Holyfield. Look there. But look there, Al. He missed about 10 consecutive punches. Just when you were talking about it, Cowie got underneath almost every punch from Holyfield and came back and landed punches of his own. You just have to watch Dwight very closely. People throw a lot of punches at him, but surprisingly few get home. You saw the smiling shrug from 33-year-old Dwight Muhammad Cowie. And that is demoralizing to Evander. He, he built up some energy for a flurry, and he got nothing out of it. Again, no movement from Holyfield, none whatsoever, standing right there. Not using the jab, not doing all the things that were laid out to, for him to do by Georgie Benton and Lou Duva. And the main reason is he just isn't strong enough. He doesn't have the energy right now to execute. For Holyfield, the boxing gloves aren't weapons right now. They're like lead weights. His punches causing little harm to Cowie. Again, we must point out that Dwight is not fresh either. 
but he has been in this territory. This is not you know, something new for him. He's been in tough fights. He's been in wars. Evander never has. Right from Holyfield, spun the head of Kawe. We're approaching the half minute mark. Everything in close. As long as Kawe keeps his his head on Evander's chest, Evander can't use his reach advantage. It can't really score with power. He's just smothered in there. When this round is over, Evander Holyfield will move into an area of boxing he has only experienced before. That area beyond the sixth round. Oh, a big right. Setting Holyfield back against the ropes, but he snaps off and keeps Cowie on us. This one is moving along at a great pace. shape of Ender Holyfield is in. At the end of round seven, the two fighters fought well past the bell for about five or six seconds, and then they heard the bell and stopped. Vinny Reno and the referee still hadn't heard the bell. That's all right. It never got me to class on time either. There's a great atmosphere in the Omni in Atlanta right now. The crowd chanting loudly for Holyfield. Now this is where Holyfield would like to stay for a while, center of the ring. But Cowie sliding around, trying to work Holyfield over towards the ropes. Another Big low body low. shots, and that was yeah. a low blow from Cowie to Holyfield. Vander moving to his right, which he was trained to do to stay away from the Cowie power. But he can't continue it, and he's another low blow. Vinny Reno is going to have to, another warning you heard from him. He's going to have to take a point away to really get Dwight to stop. I was saying that Evander has not been effective punching when he's moving to his right. And he hasn't been able to maintain any kind of movement. Those combinations not getting in. Simply hitting the gloves of Kawi. You just saw Evander land some right hands to Dwight's shoulder. They want to try to weaken Dwight by doing that. Try to open him up, try to bring him out of his shell. He's such a tough target, though. Yeah. He just gives you nothing to hit. Gives you the top of his head. He slides sideways, and he covers up his body, which isn't very large to begin with. Holyfield leaning in. Even when you score a right hand like Evander just did, he rolls away and takes most of the effect away from it. There's the uppercut. Not much on it by Evander, but I really think if he set himself and let it, let his right uppercut go in close, he could score effectively with it. Another right uppercut from Cowie to Holyfield. That left got into the chin of Cowie, but there wasn't much behind it. In the corner of Holyfield, you may hear Lou Duba screaming, hit the target, hit the target. Yeah, that target is that left shoulder that he's talking about. We just talked about it. Trying to weaken him, trying to open the opponent up. There, he went after it again. Just past the half-minute mark of round seven. Keep in mind, Holyfield moving along in this fight. He's only been to eight rounds once in his career. And he looks a little slower and slower as this fight moves along. Come on, let's see that jab. Come on, you got the best jab there. 
Troutwick along with Alex Wallow. We are live at ringside for the WBA World Junior Heavyweight Championship between Evander Holyfield and Dwight Muhammad Cowie. Cowie has been a bulldog throughout. As we move to round eight, this championship fight scheduled to go 15. As we come up to the halfway point uh, in this fight, Al, I have Evander ahead by three points. I gave him the last round. I thought he came, he came back and scored effectively at, at moments in that round, and Dwight seemed to be taking some time off. There's some effective punch, a good combination by Evander. Not as crisp, not as powerful, but they were scoring. And Dwight is not throwing back. Generally, he would retaliate. But right now, he's run out of gas a little bit. Holyfield still, as you see, when he has the opportunity, trying to concentrate on that shoulder of Cowie. right in the center of the ring. You saw him go around the, the elbow to drill. Oh, good right hand by Evander. Evander uses the shoulder to back uh, Dwight up to get himself punching room. Does it again. Has to keep Dwight at bay. Right now, Evander's doing a good job. He is getting around that defensive Cowie. Holyfield coming to life in this round eight. But look at Cowie still coming. Still stalking. I think I've seen him take a step backwards the entire fight. Really just to regroup a couple of times. And a left to right that keeps Holyfield back on the ropes and another good combination. Good right hand and he has Evander a little bit hurt right now. Just a little bit stunned. Alex, it looked as though Evander used up a lot of energy in a, about a minute ago and then tried to take a breather on the ropes and that's when Cowie jumped all over him. There will be no breathers in this fight for Evander. Just about a minute to go. Just a grueling battle right now of attrition. I mean, you hit me and I'll hit you, I'll flurry, you flurry. It really depends upon stamina. Good body shot by Cowie. As these two try to chip away and chip away at the stamina of each other. Holyfield at the age of 23, Cowie at 33. They both know what a loss would do to their respective careers. And Cowie is warning Holyfield. Holyfield slapped him in the cheek, and then Cowie came right at him. Cowie was complaining to Holyfield about being held around the head. Evander was trying to clinch. There have been so few clinches in this fight, he really didn't know how to do it. Come on. Round nine, scheduled to go 15. We've spoken an awful lot about the experience of Evander Holyfield. Well, I think it's important now. He's never gone this far in his professional career or in his career period. He's fighting Dwight Muhammad Cowie live this afternoon in Atlanta for the WBA Junior Heavyweight Championship of the World. see that last round I thought that went back and forth and back and forth it was tough for me to figure out who might have had the stranglehold on it when it was over well I thought Evander clearly won about the first 45 seconds Dwight rallied well in the middle of the round I thought Evander came back and scored maybe a little bit more at the end of the round and shaded that round very tough here because number one they're doing a lot of infighting and number two Dwight is rolling away and blocking and slipping a lot of these punches it's a tough fight to score see Dwight Bob see him move caught that jab Evander's using the jab now. He's finally listened to George Benton in his corner, and he's holding Dwight off with the jab. And caught him coming in with a good right hand. Holyfield tried to respond with a right that just glanced off the gloves of Cowie. He caught him, but he did not stop him. Cowie is right back in his face. Evander showed his strength there. You see him push him away, back Dwight up, but he just can't sustain that. A lot of gamesmanship on display in between these ropes today in Atlanta. Field, still bouncing, still on his toes. And in this round, using the jab much more, which is a very smart thing to do. He keeps Dwight outside with it and allows himself to take a little bit of a rest. That uppercut left and a jab from the right by Holmes. 
Holyfield got into Cowie, but now Holyfield leaning against the ropes. And then again, pushing Cowie away. Yeah, but he made a dangerous mistake, a mistake based on inexperience here. He dropped his hands on the ropes. For the first time here, he has pinned Cowie in the ropes, but he didn't do anything, as Dwight says. Again, another smiling shrug from Cowie. You may see a discrepancy at times from our clock on the screen and the clock that is being kept here at the arena with the belt. Uh, there have been problems all day. What more can I say? Any reasons uh, that could be for that? Atlanta is not a big fight town. They have had some shows here, most notably the heavyweight show in January and uh, Muhammad Ali against Jerry Quarry years ago in Ali's comeback fight, but it is not a big fight town. It's just simply inexperience on the part of the commission. And the relatively quiet bell has resulted in much fighting after the bell. Any other way it could affect the fight, do you think? I mean, 15 rounds is long enough without having longer rounds. Well, I really hope that it doesn't lead to one fighter uh, dropping his hands when he hears the bell, the other fighter not hearing it and, and landing a shot that could turn the fight around after the bell. Holyfield trying to stand his ground now. The battle for the second win continues. charge to the center of the ring as we begin round 11 in their WBA junior heavyweight title fight. The belt belongs to Cowie at the age of 33, Holyfield at 23. Of course, you remember him with the controversial bronze medal at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Since then, 11 successful pro bouts. The question which is attempted to, which Holyfield is attempting to answer today is, is 11 professional bouts enough going up against someone of the experience of Cowie? An awful lot of people in boxing thought it was not. Thought that, that Evander is a tremendous talent, but this is just too soon to put him in with somebody with the toughness and the strength and the determination of Dwight Muhammad Kawi. A very loud crowd of about eight or 9,000 at the Omni in Atlanta. Still Kawi, head down, gloves out, coming forward towards Holyfield. combination of punches. They got around the defense of Cowie. Evander must not get excited here. He must pace himself. He can't expend all his energy because as we've seen time and again, Cowie will rally just as he is right here. Holyfield trying desperately to cover up the barrage from Cowie. Resting his head on Holyfield's chest. Now I believe a chant of Cowie in the arena. What a turnaround for the hometown kid, Holyfield. I think it was Holy. I, I don't know. It's tough to tell. But uh, I do not think they were chanting for Cowie, but I could be wrong. The Holyfield corner again complaining about low blows. Good scoring right combination by Evander and another right hand. And still Cowie comes. No clinches. A lunging left. Again, the perspiration flying off the face of Holyfield as Cowie gets in. You see Evander's inexperience just then. For some reason, he put his right hand up to block against the jab. What he should have been doing is protecting against the right hand of, of Cowie. And Cowie got the right home and scored with it. Round 11 winding down. At most, we have four more to go in Atlanta. Now what we got to do in these next rounds is outpunch this guy, okay? You got to outpunch him. You got to get off a few more punches when you're there, all right? You're not getting off enough. You're letting him outpunch you. And not in number. Before when you finish this, yeah, we will. We will. A number, you know? That's all he's winning it on. Let him go up now. And then make it home. Let him go up now. You got to go up now. You got to remember we're... Give me a towel. 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 Give
Round 12, scheduled for 15 in Atlanta. Al Troutwig along with Alex Wallow, Dwight Muhammad Cowie still the pursuer. What a pest he's been through 11 rounds to Evander Holyfield. With the height advantage and the reach advantage, but experience and years in the ring lacking. But he's trying to tee off now on Cowie. But Alex, I think, and we've seen it three or four times in the fight, he uses too much on not enough opportunity against Cowie in those flurries early in a round. He's not picking his shots quite as well as he could, and he uses up and wastes a lot of energy doing it. <clears throat> it's just a matter of experience, and he'll, this is a tremendous learning experience, win or lose for Vander Holyfield. It looks to be at this point like he can go 15 rounds. He's not fresh, he's tired, he's had ebb and flow in terms of his energy, but he definitely looks like he can go 15 rounds. jab and then coming up with the right uppercut doubling with it but again standing staying on the ropes he tried to turn Cowie there and push him back got his distance good right hand by Holyfield and a big powerful right the likes of which we haven't seen from Holyfield in a few rounds and stand by for Kyle Wee. Wesley Muzon in Dwight's corner told him between rounds he has to throw more punches. He said, this is the other guy's hometown. You have to be busy. The question is, at age 33, at least age 33, can Dwight, against a strong, tough, determined, gutty young opponent, can Dwight Muhammad Kyle be busy? Can he sustain the action? round inside the final minute of round 12 and those legs that could support a pier Cowie still uses them to move forward and get Holyfield against the ropes now for the past couple of days we've had a chance to follow the fortunes of the Atlanta Braves all the fans here and we are too looking forward to the midsummer classic the all-star game on Tuesday night Eastern time. Holyfield bouncing off the ropes looking a little tired. I, I don't think he was hurt. I just think he took a good stiff jab and he just went back in the ropes just from fatigue more than the punch. Good scoring punch from Kawi. He has not used the jab that much because he's been happy to get in tight where he can't get hurt. 12th round winding down. Perhaps three more to go. Who will have enough left? Now let's 
see if history repeats itself again. Will Cowie come lunging back at Holyfield, who has used up too much energy? Yeah, of course he will. But he does not have, he's just been worn down a little bit too much right now. He just can't come back with enough to make up for what uh, Holyfield did. Right now, Dwight's well behind in this round, uh, with a minute gone in the round. Remember, three judges at ringside doing the scoring on the 10-point Musk system. Referee Vinny Reynaud does not figure. And Vinny Reynaud is going to warn him again. He did not take a point away. I thought that he would come in and penalize Dwight for a point there, but he did not. A point there would have really changed things for the final couple of rounds. Midway point, or thereabouts, of round 13. Dwight's just not throwing enough punches. He's just uh, taking time off inside. He's fighting in spurts. He's just, neither fighter's, of course, fighting all the time. It's impossible with this kind of a pace and the punches they've absorbed. But Evander is just out busying him. He's just beating to the punch. And you notice the taunting that we saw a little bit of in the earlier rounds is completely absent. At the end of the last round, Dwight looked at uh, Vander to see what... Uh, Boy, wasn't that a great look again? Yeah, he gave him a look to say, what, what are you still doing here? Vander just calmly walked back to his corner. Holyfield sliding away from that right nicely. You He's, know, we, we've talked a lot about how this is the only time that uh, Vander Holyfield has been this far. Dwight has only been this far once before. That was his 15-round decision loss to Michael Spinks. you and then I'll hit you again good combination two to the chin of Kelly some more his gloves have dropped believe it or not Kelly dropped his gloves he does that to try to entice a Vander into letting his hands go and trying to get some counter punching opportunities but he took some punishment there a right that looked like it just glanced off the chin of Cowie. No big damage, but there certainly was a lot behind it. And the school bell sounds, and the round is over. Two to go. They're loving it in Atlanta. Uppercut in the left hook behind it, and the right, and another left that missed. Evander Holyfield has such good basic skills. He puts punches together. He's got power in both those hands. Left jab, missed the left. There you saw, and the uppercut. And right hands and a left behind it. Evander said before the fight that he almost didn't mind if Dwight slipped that jab. He didn't have to hit him with it. He wanted to bring him in on the right hand. And that replay, you saw him do exactly that. And the key thing was that Evander wasn't satisfied just to land the one punch. He put punches with both hands together. You may have heard Cowie ask, is this the 14th? Yes, it is. And amazingly, for all the slugging, all the punching, no cuts. Some puffiness on the face of Dwight Muhammad Cowie. His eyes reddened from the blows leveled on him by this 23-year-old bronze medalist from the LA Olympics of 84, Evander Holyfield. officially a professional fighter. He can go these 14 and he will be able to go the 15 rounds. 
And trust me, that was a tremendous question in his mind. He may not admit it, but until you've done it, you don't know you can do it. Cowie is right, blocked by Holyfield. And still the pursuit. Unrelenting coming towards Holyfield throughout this entire fight. Holyfield taking a moment to glance over at the directions of Lou Duva. And Lou Duva did one thing. He shot his left hand out four times. He wants him to jab and stay away. Keep his distance. Not let Cowie get into range. Last minute of the 14th. Same thing, Al, since about the fifth round, fifth or sixth round. Two men trading, the younger man being the busier, the more active, and scoring the more punches. Both men showing unbelievable courage and determination. We're wrapping up 14 great rounds of boxing. The 15th is up next, live in Atlanta. saying that to us right now. He didn't believe it either. He was just trying to psych him out. He was not able to do that. He has not been able to do that. On my scorecard, Evander Holyfield is ahead by five points and in control of this fight. That is, of course, unofficial. Again, Evander slips this time in Cowie's corner. He did not go down this time. Vinny Ron stops the, the clock, orders both corners to dry him up. Each corner is just soaking his man with water and ice, trying to revive him, trying to make his man the fresher. I see ice cubes up in the corner of Holyfield, right above us here at ringside. That right snapped the jaw of Holyfield. Another left coming in from Kawi. Both fighters are going to let it all hang out here in the 15th and final round. Alex, do you think Kawi realizes or thinks that he is behind? I really wouldn't want to take a guess, Al. I, I think he must know. But you can't tell from his style because he fights the same way all the time. He's trying to knock your head off all the time. I was wrong. The chant is definitely holy, holy for Holyfield. It's his hometown, remember. They've watched him mature. They've watched him in the Olympic Games. Perhaps they share that disappointment with him. Yeah, he has done them very, very proud, and himself very proud today. Al. But here's Cowie, the veteran. Does he have any tricks left? Dwight has nothing to be ashamed of either. He has given, I think, everything he has to give. I just don't think at this age and at that weight that he can give enough to beat. In my opinion, he hasn't given enough to beat this young challenger. Now we're approaching the final minute of the 15th and final round, but there was a stoppage to wipe off the corners. And that time, Cowie looked at Vinnie Reno and the referee and Asked him what he was warning him about. He didn't understand. Cowie asking Renon to warn Holyfield for Holy behind the head. And Cowie landed a good left hook there. Evander may have uh, flurried a little bit too much early in this round. He's going to have to gut the end of this round out. Holyfield slipping again. 
give Dwight Muhammad Kawi credit. He did not let a punch go when Holyfield was down. We're, we can see Dwight head on right now. He is very tired. He is just wide open with his mouth. Could barely hold his hands on, and he backs up. A big right that really stunned Kawi. He stuttered. But now, look at him. Still, fire left in his eyes and in some of his punches. I think that was the experience. I think Dwight may know he has to knock him out. I think he might have felt the way to get him to come in wide open was to back up. And there's the final bell. from Dwight's face that he recognizes that he gave everything he had but today against Evander Holyfield it was not enough. Cowie. I was just told by referee Vinny Renone that there was a point taken away for a low blow from Cowie. So still to come the much awaited decision is Evander Holyfield's dream come true. Or has Kawi withstood the storm, and what a storm it was to hold on to his championship belt. Well, which way did the ball bounce here in Atlanta today? Did it bounce for Evander Holyfield? Certainly the experts sitting at ringside here seem to think so. Or maybe did the champion hold on Dwight Muhammad Kawi for the WBA junior heavyweight title. His eyes puffy. He looks a little dazed. Certainly he looks like the beaten man in the ring right now. 15 fabulous rounds of boxing. A staggering blow by Holyfield who got his second wind I believe in the 11th or 12th round. Kawi just dropped stuttered on his feet and then roared right back at Holyfield and really stunned him with a big right. You see Terrell Biggs, Natalie attired in the back, standing over the crowd, wondering perhaps when his day was come. Mark Breland is in the ring, Meldrick Taylor. There's Terrell, remember he broke his collarbone, still on the mend. Pernell Whitaker also here, he had a broken finger in his bone, and he is on the mend as well. Let's go into the ring. I have your attention, please. We have a majority decision. Judge Letterman scores the fight 144-140, Holyfield. <laughs> Judge, Judge Volkman scores the fight 143-141, Cowie. <laughs> Judge Quintana scores the fight 147-138 for the winner. And new <laughs> junior. Angeles. Who would have thought that the man who suffered the greatest disappointment would be the first to achieve a world title? The new WBA World Junior Heavyweight Champion Evander Holyfield in a split decision. So Dwight Muhammad Kawi, two titles in his professional career and now at the age of 33 has lost a title for the second time.